Hey everyone, welcome back. I've got another interesting new drone to show you today. This is the X Night 5 by Beta FPV. It's an ultralight 5 inch drone and it's designed to squeak just under the 250 gram threshold with a 6S battery like that. So that's lighter than usual, but it's still in the same basic category as this Tweed ET5. These are kind of going for the same thing, a super lightweight but still 5 inch props. If you didn't see my review of this, uh, you might want to check that out. I talk about the class in general in that video too. I'll put a link down in the video description. But the X Night 5 is different. It has different motors, different frame, different flight controller. Pretty much everything on this one is different. So I think there are some interesting things to talk about. Some of the components are really nice and it certainly flies really nice. But in terms of durability, uh, there are a few things that you're going to want to fix before you even fly it for the first time. Uh, that's kind of unfortunate, but I'll show you what I would do to fix this up in just a minute. First, let's take a look at some flight footage. So to give this drone a good test, I took it out to our FPV drone park. This place is managed by volunteers from FPV Racing Seattle, and it's totally awesome. I love flying around these trees, and there's enough room to really get this thing up to speed, so hopefully you'll get a good chance to see how it performs. The sound is being recorded from a phone, which is right next to me, and so it's going to be louder when it's closer to my seat and quieter farther away. One thing I'll address right away, if you look in the upper corners, you'll see that black vignetting on the FPV image. That's because I cranked the angle of this camera almost all the way up. If you had it at a lower angle, you would not be seeing uh, the black corners like that. But I kind of like turning up the angle on a build that's this light. To me, that's one of the advantages of having a lightweight build. If you think about a really heavy build, it takes a lot of thrust just to keep it up. So if you pitch it really far or if you bank really hard into the turns, then Either you're going to fall or you're using a ton of thrust and you're going to be going really fast. But when you've got a drone that's this light, you can kind of exaggerate those moves a little bit more and really dig into the turns uh, without going so fast in a smaller space. And so that's one of the advantages of a lightweight build, but it does feel pretty different. If you are used to micro drones, then this is going to feel like kind of a power trip. But if you are used to the more traditional, heavier 5 inch drones, uh, then this is going to feel kind of floaty and kind of weak. It's not going to have that same raw power. It's not going to have the same momentum. If you want to huck it over the trees, you kind of got to stay on the throttle. But if you get used to that, it can be a lot of fun. I certainly had fun with this one. And I also want to point out it's definitely quieter than a traditional 5 inch drone as well. In the intro, I mentioned that this drone is just under 250 grams if you fly it with a 550 millibar 6S battery like Beta FPV recommends. And that number, 250 grams, is actually kind of the whole point of this drone. Beta FPV obviously went through uh, special lengths in order to get the weight down on this one to get just under that threshold. And I don't know what the regulations are like in your area, but in the United States, 250 grams is the threshold for registration. If it's over that amount, you have to register with the FAA. If it's under that amount, then you don't. Even in the future, if they pass their new restrictions with remote ID, a drone like this will still squeak just under that threshold and not be regulated by the FAA. So I think that is a reason why people are going to be looking at this drone. But do keep in mind that it's very close to that threshold. So if you fly with a larger battery, or you stick uh, the DJI system on here, anything that you do to add weight is going to push you over that threshold. So you have to decide if it's worth it for you. Uh, it's certainly easy to build a 3 inch or a 4 inch drone that's under that threshold. Even with the DJI system, you can do that and stay under the threshold and it's pretty easy. It's a lot harder with a 5 inch, but they managed to do it in this case, which is pretty impressive. The motors on this drone are interesting as well. They are 1805 T-mount props. It comes with Genfan 51 25 three blade props. HQ also makes a three blade prop and a two blade prop that are this size with T-mount, but I think that's about it. You definitely can't use most five inch props because those are designed for a five millimeter shaft. These props have a really low pitch, but that kind of works with the smaller motor size. That's part of this super lightweight class. Now the KV is really interesting. These are 1550 KV motors, and that is the lowest KV I have ever flown on any motor on any drone of any size. Uh, it's really low, even for 6S. So I was really curious to see how this would fly. I thought it would be more sluggish than it was, but it actually has some pretty good acceleration because it's so light. Where it's lacking the power is on the high end. Uh, if you just keep laying on the throttle, uh, it does not hit the same kind of speed. You don't have the same kind of overall power that you would have on like a 5 inch racing drone, for example. But I think if there's an advantage to having this really low KV, it's that it helps it to get away with a smaller battery. And if you look at the current reading on screen, this thing is just sipping current. It's below 5 amps total 
most of the time. And even in a punch out, it's just in the mid 20s. So if you can't tell, I had a lot of fun flying this, no question about that. If you want to see the rest of that flight, I will stick it at the end of this video so you can see how it does kind of throughout the battery. But first, let's put it on the bench. There's a few specific things I want to show you. And real quick, I'll just mention that I'm making this video in my free time because I think this stuff is interesting and I hope that it is helpful for you. If it is, then feel free to hit those like and subscribe buttons and that will help make sure that more people have a chance to see this video. If not, no worries. Uh, and of course, you can find the links for everything down in the video description. So here's the drone up close. It has a pretty cool look to it, but you can see just how skinny these arms are. I think it's fair to say that they are definitely giving up some durability in order to get the weight of this drone down, but I get it. That's kind of the point of this drone. But there are a few problems with this drone that have nothing to do with weight, and this is really pretty inexcusable. These are things that Beta FPV could have fixed, but you're going to have to fix it yourself. Okay, problem number one is this FPV antenna. You can see how it's clipped into the canopy, but the part that's clipped in is just a smooth plastic tube, so there's nothing at all to prevent it from sliding out this way and coming loose. And this is not a theoretical problem. Uh, while I was flying at the ranch, I crashed it maybe half a dozen times, and literally every single time this antenna popped out. And it was really frustrating because it meant that I couldn't just turtle and go. I had to walk over there and fix the antenna every single time. And it gets worse because the VTX isn't attached to anything either. The whole thing can just kind of come out like this. It's really a miracle that none of these wires got chopped up by the props while I was doing that. So I suggest you secure this antenna before you even fly it for the first time. What I would do is use some E6000 glue right inside of this clip. Use plenty of glue so it's just held in there really well. And then in this gap right here, I would put one or two zip ties and just ratchet them down as tight as they can go, and hopefully that'll fix it for you. Problem number two has to do with all of these screws. When I first got this drone, I checked the screws and I found that all of them were loose. I could get at least a quarter turn tighter on every single screw. There's four per motor and eight in the center, and I highly recommend you tighten them all down before you even fly it. Um, I have past experience with frames like this, and I know that the arms will just wiggle their way loose if it's not really tight. And even then, I somehow managed to lose two screws down here on this motor, which is kind of a bummer because these are really nice screws. Usually when companies make Binafly drones, they use cheap steel hardware to keep the cost down, but these are titanium, or at least they appear to be titanium, and uh, that's part of the secret of how this thing is so light. So I recommend backing out each screw one at a time and then using some of this blue thread locker on the tip and then stick it back in. This is not like glue. You'll still be able to back out the screws if you need to, but it will keep it from vibrating loose. Problem number three has to do with the receiver antennas. You can see I've got the Crossfire antenna on here and it's actually fine, but I do want to point out that if you get the FR Sky or DSMX version, then you might get antennas like this mounted to the side of the canopy. I talked about this in my review of the ET5 binding fly. These tubes are really terrible. They will definitely get bent down. They will definitely get chopped by the props. Um, now, I've given this feedback to Beta FPV before, and they've told me that they're changing how these are mounted, so hopefully you will get the new ones, but if you get one like this, I suggest you take it off and mount it to the arms with a zip tie before these get lost. Problem number four are these zip ties holding the wires. Now, the wires are inside of these mesh tubes. I like that. It protects them, and it looks pretty nice, but these zip ties, at least on mine, are really loose. You see how it can just kind of slide like that, and there's only one per arm, and so I had one break back here in a crash. I'm not sure how it broke, but once it did, this was actually popping up and getting hit by the props. So before you fly this drone, I suggest you either tape these down or add a second zip tie for each of these. I would probably even cut off these zip ties and redo them so that you can get them nice and tight, and that will help keep your wires out of trouble. And the fifth problem that I had relates to the battery strap. This is not the strap that it came with. It came with one of these blue Beta FPV straps, but it had this plastic buckle. I don't know if you can see that. And maybe this was bad luck, but the very first flight, I hit a branch. Uh, it was maybe seven or eight feet off the ground, and then I fell and tumbled through the grass, and I went over and found it. It had thrown the battery and broken this plastic buckle. On most of the Beta FPV drones that have this blue strap, it has a metal buckle, but again, trying to save every gram, they swapped this to plastic, and unfortunately, mine broke right away. Again, that could just be bad luck. Maybe it just hit in a particular way. I don't know how common of a problem this will be, but I need to point it out. So I swapped it to this one right here. This is actually just a heavy-duty cable tie. They're not as convenient as the buckle style straps, but they are quite strong, and they're light and they're cheap, and I had these in my bag, so that's what I stuck on there. 
So those issues are rather unfortunate, but once you get that fixed up, there actually is a lot to like about this drone. The components that are on this drone are actually really nice. These motors are super smooth, uh, the 1805 motors. I don't know how durable they will be, uh, but so far so good. The flight controller is the 35 amp uh, F4 flight controller. That's 35 amps per motor, and there's no way this is ever going to pull anywhere near that. So hopefully having that much headroom is going to make it uh, pretty reliable. And this flight controller also has a current sensor, which is nice, and it runs Beale Heli 32, which is also a nice feature. And the camera is the Cadex Baby Rattel, and I really like this camera. I've bought several of these in the past to use on my own build. It has a really nice picture for the size. And so all the components on here are really nice. If you can get it cleaned up, then I think it'll be a pretty nice build. The only problem then would be the frame and the durability of this frame, which only time will tell. The arms are three and a half millimeters thick and they are six millimeters wide in this direction. If you grab it like this, you can see there's actually a lot of flex. So I don't know what kind of carbon it is, but it doesn't feel very strong to me. I think it's fair to say that if you get a solid hit into the ground or into a tree, you're just gonna break these arms. So if you're buying this drone, I suggest you get several replacement arms right off the bat. Just plan on breaking them and replacing those arms. Fortunately, it shouldn't take very long to replace those arms. Or another option is you could swap the parts onto the Twig ET5 frame. This frame is made of T700 carbon. It's super strong. You can tell it's much more rigid than the x Knight frame, and so I think this is actually a better frame, but the x Knight has the better components. I actually think you could take all the components off of this and just swap it onto the ET5 frame, and as long as you tidy everything up and fix those issues that I just mentioned, then I think that would actually be a really great build. I'm going to be building another one pretty soon, and when I do, I will use these 2004 17,000 kV motors. These are only 16 and a half grams. I'm really looking forward to trying these out, so you can check that out on my channel. We've talked so much about weight. Let's just get an official weight on the scale before we wrap up. Looks like 144 grams. And then if you add a 550 milliamp hour 6S battery, like Beta FPV recommends, then we're going to get about 246, 247 grams. Uh, again, my battery strap is different, so it might be a tiny bit different, but it's going to be in that ballpark, something right under 250. And speaking of batteries, this is the 550 that Beta FPV recommends. It is six cell and they claim 75C. I don't know much about the performance of this battery other than it seems to work perfectly fine in this build. I get at least four minutes of pretty hard freestyle with a battery like this, but it so happens that the flight you actually watched was with this R-Line 650 million power battery. And this is a really great battery. I would happily recommend this battery. Although it does weigh a little bit more, it'll push it over that 250 gram threshold if that matters to you. Another thing to point out is that this one has an XT30. And so you might think that's kind of unusual. I have a little adapter so that I can plug it into the XT60, but the flight that you saw was actually running through this adapter and through this XT30 connector. So I guess that kind of proves that XT30 really is fine for this build. If you wanted to save even a tiny bit more weight, you could switch to XT30. I'm not saying you should or should not necessarily, but you could get away with it because the XT30 is rated for 30 amps and I've never seen the drone pull 30 amps total, even in like a power climb. And so this connector seems to do just fine. And then I did a flight with this 1050 milliamp hour 6S battery. This weighs a whole lot more. I thought it would bog the drone down, but actually it flew fine with this. And with a battery this size, you can really use a lot of high throttle and you can just kind of push it as hard as you want. And it's okay because the KV of those motors is so incredibly low. So that's the x Knight 5. I hope I was able to give you some good information. Hopefully I answered a few of your questions. If not, be happy to discuss it down in the comment section below. And I'm also interested to know what you think of this drone and this ultralight 5-inch class in general. Are you excited to see the components getting pushed lighter and lighter in this direction? Uh, or are you going to stick with your micro drones? Or are you going to stick with your heavier 5-inch drones? Kind of what camp are you in? I'd be interested to hear about that be happy to discuss down in the comments below. This is the analog FPV version of the drone. There is also one with the DJI digital FPV system. If you decide to buy either of these, I'll put the links down in the video description below, and I would appreciate it if you use those links. It helps me out just a little bit. If not, no worries. Now for the last thing, I will play the remainder of that flight footage, the same flight that you saw earlier, so you can see how that ends up if you're interested. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.